When Crimea was occupied and annexed by Russian forces in 2014, many promises were made by the new authorities about protecting the peninsula's citizens. But when NATO Review interviewed Crimeans living in Kiev, we found out that several had left their home region because of fear. In the first of these stories, we talked to a Crimean Tatar about why he escaped from Crimea. My feelings are, Crimea has turned into a prison. My relatives keep calling from Crimea that people disappear and the press is not informed. Why? Because when people disappear, particularly the believers, are Muslims. The relatives are even afraid to report it to the authorities, as it is the same as letting the criminals know about the violence taking place. It's pointless. Official statistics is about 18 to 19 cases, but in reality, there is a larger number of cases. But people are covering them up, as they are afraid that reporting those cases will only make matters worse. On 21 November, when people came out to the Maidan, I was here. I was at the Maidan, the European Square, and I spent here practically... I was there if not every day, but almost every day, with the Crimean Tatar flag. So de facto, I became the activist of the Maidan. I did not throw any Molotov cocktails, of course, as on that picture, and did not participate in any activities with the use of force. But as a representative of my people, with our flag, I was at the Maidan quite often, so I did not hide my position. And the social networks, there were quite a few of my photographs and videos. And people in Yalta, where I live, the neighbors, they all knew about this. So at the moment when I came back to Yalta to see the family on 22 or 23 February, I already felt the antagonism of the population that was surrounding us, non-Tatar population. So it was clear to me that this might not end well. Well, look, there were questions from the neighbors. When are you going to leave? How are you going to sell your house? Even though we were not announcing our intentions, so it will settle, creation of the situation which caused anxiety. When you are asked, and how do you plan to sell your house? We are thinking of buying your house for a low price. At school they stopped teaching. In my son's case, he is in the third form, Ukrainian subjects. There was a ban on teaching Ukrainian language. Tatar was not taught at all. They started applying Russian propaganda. So to avoid this influence, as my son is the only one Crimean Tatar in his class, it is quite a cunning system. There were no direct threats, maybe, but they were creating the atmosphere of anxiety. That's what it was, first of all. The intimidating call started already in Kiev when people thought we were still in Crimea and we were receiving the calls here, including, for example, our flat was mortgaged, mortgaged by the bank, and the bank sold the data about us to the Russian Federation. So the call started from Moscow. We will take your accommodation away, etc. That sort of thing. There they at least have the roof over their heads. They're in a quite an anxious state. They ask me, why isn't Ukraine proactive? They say, why they did not switch off water, electricity, gas, everything, cut off everything. It is better, how to say this in Russian, it is better to have a horrible end rather than horror without an end. I left with the family, my wife and four children and two of my sisters with their families. But the rest of the family, the larger part of the family remains there, of course. But they are all anxious. They are all in a state of anxiety. Somebody ended up with a stroke. Somebody had a heart attack. So they are all in a very bad psychological state.